All right, welcome back to the channel, The Psychology of Golf. Dr. Mark Piotten here from Cal State Northridge. Today we, were, we are going to be uh, reviewing and doing a video log for Brookside Golf Course in Pasadena, California. Before I get to that, I'm going to review the system briefly. I've done, this is, uh, what is this, my third video log now? So maybe you've seen the others and you know the system, but here you go. All right, so... Uh, We've got a fear rating and we've got a fun rating. The fear rating is how scary is the hole? How many hazards does it have? Does it have a like a big flock of geese walking across the middle to distract you while you're hitting your ball? Maybe that's not that scary, but you'll see some geese at Brookside. Uh, <laughs> I rank holes on this metric or on this uh, assessment uh, 1 to 18, 1 being the most scary. Okay. What about fun? Fun is the other aspect, so I do the same thing with fun. The most fun hole, at least that I have detected, that I recommend is the one that you're gonna most likely think is fun. That gets a one. And that's based on my perceptions um, with a few things that I try to uh, take into account. Like, what's the scenery like? Are the geese, like, is it fun to be with the geese out there? Or are they making too much noise? Those kinds of things uh, I take into account for the fun rating. And then the overall rating is fed into six birdie holes, six par holes, and six bogey holes. The birdie ones being the ones that are more fun than scary, and the bogey holes being the ones that are more scary than fun. All right. For this particular course, uh, we're only going to have nine holes. This is just your, your nine-hole video log. But I have ranked the, the, the holes 1 to 18 taking into account the back nine, the hidden back nine that you will not see on my video. But what is this course that I'm speaking of? It is the famous, well, I think it's pretty famous, Brookside Golf Course in Pasadena, California, right next to the Rose Bowl, the world famous, the, the, the part that, the, the thing that is world famous for sure is the Rose Bowl Stadium that sits next to Brookside Golf Course. So if you are a football fan, or a fan of some of the events that they've had at the Rose Bowl uh, over the years, over the many hundred years that's been there, then playing golf next to the stadium is going to be super cool because you're like, man, this world famous place is right there. Like, you know, and so anyway, it's, that's part of the, uh, the fun factor at Brookside, a big part, actually, I think. If you, if you've like, you don't care about football, you know, You've never been to an, an event at the Rose Bowl? Meh, yeah, there's a big stadium there. But it's going to mean more, I think, if you if you know the history. And So if you're planning on playing here, you could look up some of that history, the Rose Bowl and, and such. Um, and it'll maybe enhance the experience. There are two golf courses, um, public courses, uh, at Brookside. It's the Brookside um, Coiner and the Brookside Nay. Coiner is number one. Nay is number two. This is E.O. Nay. He, I think he, I looked it up. He was like a, the mayor of Pasadena in 1935, probably shortly after they built the course or the stadium or both. So anyway, uh, there are 36 holes. So I'm only covering nine of the 36 here, the front nine of the Nay course. And to be honest, like that's probably not the most fun nine out of the, the four nines that exist at this site. Uh, the Coiner course runs a little bit closer to the actual stadium. Uh, the ninth hole of Coiner is um, right along the, the, the back side of the fence there, the stadium. Um, so that's cool about Coiner. Uh, the back nine of Nay, uh, which again, I will not be covering here, kind of goes across the road to the north side where it's a little bit more secluded and more like a nature setting. That's also not covered. So this will give you a feel for the rest of the course, though, and, and it should uh, give you a preview overall of what both courses look like um, because there's a lot of similarity. So let's get into it. Are we ready for some vlogging? Here's the scorecard for Nay. This is actually um, the shorter of the two courses. I wouldn't say easier necessarily. I would just say shorter. Like if you play, so this is 6,025 yards from the blue tees. If you play the white tees at Coiner, the other one, it's similar, um, similar in distance, similar in difficulty, I would say. But
but Coiner also offers blue and black tees. The black tees are like 7,000 yards. So if you're a long hitter and you want to challenge that way, go to Coiner. Otherwise, uh, Nay is going to be just fine. Um, so that's your preview. And on the front nine, which we're going to cover, it's like par four, 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 four three, four, 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 four. So it's tons of par fours, eight out of nine. And then the first three holes of the back nine are like par three, par five, par three. So the variety there comes in the back nine, which is part of the reason there's a little more um, fun factor potentially on the back nine, which we will, again, not get to, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so no no, uh, no hole here on the front nine is going to get uh, number one fun rating. Um, the number one fun rating for me is mm, probably number 12 because you're back in the in the, uh, the quiet area back there. So check out hole number 11. 11, 12, and 13 are all really, uh, really fun. So anyway, you, in, in other news, in other, <laughs> in other videos, you might see those. Uh, this one, just looking at the front nine, um, hole number one, pretty straightforward, uh, 382 yard par four. There is a, like you'll see on the, on the diagram there, there's like a, uh, pathway, a dirt pathway running through, uh, the middle, but it actually, you, the ball usually kicks off that. It's not a hazard. So really just one bunker on the left side of the fairway, pretty wide open, pretty inviting, uh, hole. Uh, fun rating 14, just because it's pretty flat and straightforward dog leg to the right. Um, so this is a bogey hole just because it's not it doesn't really stand out otherwise uh, in terms of fun. But here is Brookside. You, the setting here is, is cool, not just because of the stadium, but because of the hills that surround this area. Um, and there's a lot of culture to it, I feel like. There's people walking around the, the edge of the course uh, for, their, for their workouts. It's like a loop that you can do. I think it's about a 5K if you go around once. Um, so there's, there's lots of life here, including... Geese. I mentioned the geese. Watch me hit this ball, and the geese are just like, meh, we don't really care. <laughs> One thing you'll notice on this day is that my, I hit a few mud balls. Um, in fact, I hit a couple. I, I rarely do this, but I, um, I hit a couple mud balls, and then I dropped a new ball, and I hit it again, just because, meh. Like, it's rare when you get rain the day before golf in Pasadena, California. We're in a drought but it rained the day before I was out there. So I came up short on that approach. Here you see the green. This is also a small target. Some of these greens, some of the difficulty on this, on this course is that the greens are really small and there's some slope to them. There's not, like they're not uh, fast greens in the traditional sense. Like if you get a flat putt, it's not gonna be fast, but there is slope and you can't always detect it because the fairway's flat but then you get to the green and it's a little bit elevated or something. In this case, I overshot the green. Now I'm trying to get back to par range. And this is a downhill chip. This was my best shot of the hole because I was actually able to get the distance right and save bogey. Uh, but look at this, this is gonna be like a downhill left or right. So yeah, so it was, a, it was a miraculous bogey save there for me in the first hole. The challenge there came from the green area that the small target and also the mud which i don't think is going to be your primary concern typically at brookside uh, but it was for me this day so hole number two fun rating 17 fear rating seven this is another bogey hole kind of a i mean it's just another 390 yard par four so kind of similar to hole one um in fact sometimes i get them mixed up in my memory but i get i like the number one green was small. Number, hole number two green is even smaller. Like this is a small target, um, but it is a wide open fairway. So if you're driving the ball well, you're going to be fine on these holes. If your iron game is not accurate, you're going to suffer. And so this, for me, on this particular start, uh, I didn't really start well with the with the irons uh, that I needed to to have here. Um, oftentimes, the first four holes or so. I, I get down in a hole like in terms of my score and then I'm able to come back a little bit because the course relaxes after four holes. So the first four holes at Nay, definitely a challenge. Also fun rating 17 just because, I mean, just kind of a wide open hole here with trees right and left, but not like a forest or anything. Just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a pretty flat course. It, there's a slight uphill going north. So we're going north here 
it's a slight uphill. But I was not accurate with that drive, still managed to stay uh, at or close to the fairway. Not sure I got the, sh the, um, the tracer right there. It looks like I hit some sort of strange fade, but I just kind of left it short and right here. This was one where I, I hit a second chip because I, it was totally in the mud the first time. So this chip came out okay. I just wanted to hit a clean chip for the, for the video. <laughs> so forgive me. I didn't want to have one mud shot per hole. But anyway, uh, I managed to almost save par off of that. Settle for bogey here. This was a day in December, so we had some rain the day before. and um, Again, that's not always going to happen. All right, another par four, uh, the third hole. And another one with some pretty good distance with a slight uphill the whole time. Again, going kind of south to north here. Um, behind this hole, you'll see that, um, that road where people are, are um, going by walking, getting their workouts in, running. But the fear rating of four, which is pretty high for this hole, comes from the fact that the um, concrete creek is running along the hole here on the left side. And we're going to see this creek a few times. Uh, it's, uh, it was, there was water in it in this particular day. There isn't always a lot of water in there. Um, but the creek, if, like if you, if you go too far left here, you're in big trouble. Your ball is, is gone because it goes into that creek and then it might end up in the Pacific Ocean. I don't know. <laughs> uh, down the, uh, wherever that creek goes. Um, in the city of Los Angeles. Anyway, so fear rating four because you don't want to go left. But you can go right. Right is the safe side. Um, you're just going to have to deal with a, a tree or two or three uh, if you go uh, uh, too far right. There's also a bunker on that side. Fun rating 13. We're not getting to the most fun holes yet. So these are pretty just straightforward. You can see the, the creek. It has these concrete kind of sides to it over there. Not the most scenic creek, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's there. It provides some, uh, some character here as well to the course. Uh, the tracer makes it look like I hit some sort of hook, but it's a, it was just a, a gentle draw. Good shot, actually. Uh, five iron didn't quite get this one, so I haven't gotten my rhythm off the fairways yet. The other thing about these fairways, by the way, is that sometimes if they have a football game or if they have an event, they use the fairways as a parking lot. Not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> so, like, on the first hole, I forgot to mention... They, they had re clearly laid out some new grass. This was toward the end of the football season, um, but the, the actual Rose Bowl game, the bowl game, like you know January 1st, that's still coming up. So there's gonna be parking on the course that day. So you might catch the fairways on a, on a, on a recovery day. You might not, it kind of depends, but they do a good job overall. And the greens, they always fence those off for the events. So the greens stay in pretty good shape. The bunkers stay in pretty good shape. Anyway, I came up short here, hit a chip off the leaves, and, 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 and I saved par. Look at that. Putt of the day. I didn't know whether to celebrate or, or not. <laughs> I should have celebrated, and I should have carried that with me to the next hole a little bit more than I did. The next hole, par four. Uh, uh, yeah, hole four, par four, number one handicap, fear rating two, fun rating three. Wow. What's going on with this hole? Well, you can see on the diagram that there is a pond to the right of the hole. And that pond comes into the fairway, like the fairway starts with pretty good um, width. And then the pond kind of turns left and now the, the fairway is half as wide and it becomes really narrow. So we've had big targets off the tee for the first three holes. Now we've got a, a small target, or you can just play it short. That the, the, the narrowness there happens at about 250 plus yards. So I'm usually short of, of that. But you also want to get it out there pretty far, as far as you can, because 433 yards for the hole from the blue tees, the, the whole thing is, is a long hole. So that's why it's handicap one. The other thing about it, so you got the pond on the right, and then you got the creek on the left. So there's no, there's no safe side. And so that's why we're... Um, uh, we're calling it scary, uh, but it's only a par hole as opposed to bogey hole. Why? Because it's fun. I mean, there's some variety here. What you can do is play it way off to the right. If you're hitting short of 250 yards, you're going to be fine. 
if you're a long hitter, you can try to fly it further, um, but then you got to be accurate with that with that long drive. So some different variety there, and then a, a fairly narrow um, approach shot as well, although the tee shot is the key. So here's the look. We're going back to the south here, um, and I just kind of played a... a I played it shorter than I than I needed to there. It was accurate, but short. <laughs> Even if I hit it towards the water, it wouldn't have got there. So I ended up on the left side here. And I'm playing a two iron because I am, well, not sure about the shot tracer there. It was a, that, this was a worm burner though. <laughs> playing two iron because I wanna, like if you watched my video on Ojai Valley Inn, I was hitting three woods off of uneven lies uh, like above my feet or below my feet. And so now I'm kind of trying to adjust back and hit, hit an iron off of those lies because I'm just more confident with that club. Everybody's going to be different um, with those fairway uneven lie shots. But there are a few here at Brookside, even though it's a generally flat course. My worm burner, though, did not quite get, make it up to the green. This was a, a mud ball uh, approach shot, but I managed to follow through on that sand wedge and and get it up to the green. Oh, and we, we didn't film the, uh, the, uh, the par putt there that I, I, uh, I missed. And then the bogey putt there that I missed. And I, <laughs> I, I started, I was plus two going into this hole and I came away plus four. I three putted that green. We didn't film it though. So did it really happen? If a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it, did I really three putt? Hmm. Well, anyway, there was no reason really to three putt on that green either. It wasn't super curvy or super fast. It was just, yeah, I made a nice putt on three and then three putted four. Oh, well, let's go on to five. Five is a fun 18. That is the most boring, <laughs> the least fun on the course. This is a par 373 yards. Pretty, it's just straightforward. Like there's nothing that's negative about this hole. It's just a straightforward par three. Not a lot of variety except for bunkers uh, surrounding the green. Uh, and fee rating 17. So it's pretty big green. Like when you're looking at greens on this course, some of them are super small. This one is not super small. It's actually a, it's actually a decent target. So I've got my five iron here, trying to shake off the three putt. Put a pretty good swing on it. I think it's gonna come up a little short though because I, I was teeing it up a little bit extra on this day to avoid the, the muddy tee boxes. Well, this was a, uh, a long two putt conversion, I think. Yeah, left myself a good eight feet, but managed to convert this one. So did not three putt that one, <laughs> luckily. All right, moving on to hole five. I think I'm, I've done better at Brookside before, so I'm hoping to, uh, after shaking off those first few holes, I'm hoping to, to recover a little bit more here, despite the mud on the ground. Hole six, uh, fear rating of five, uh-oh. So this is maybe not the, the hole to recover on, but this is a little bit of false fear. I gave it a five, You guys, it's because of that creek running along the right side. But if you look at the diagram there, the hole kind of veers off to the left and the creek veers off to the right. So even if you hit it towards the creek, it looks scary, but it's you might still have room. As opposed to, let's say, hole three, hole three, you go off to the left, you're done. Same thing with hole four. Here, yeah, it looks scary, but it's really not. Um, that, that would be my, my uh, um, local knowledge uh, <laughs> recommendation. So we're calling it a bogey hole. That's mainly, I would say, because it's not that fun. Uh, I don't know. Straight away, par four. For me, it was a chance to kind of get back on the, on the, on the par train uh, this day. So... You can, if you look closely here, by the way, you can see the uh, stadium in the distance here, which is kind of cool. Maybe you'll see it a little better on this next one. Yeah, so I'm in the fairway. You also see, by the way, see, you see that um, there's like a horizontal line on the ground. That's like a parking space <laughs> that was used for the stadium, this fairway. So, yeah, you can see there's a, it's a little bit beat up. Um, I think if you play this course in the spring, there's fewer events. And like foot, it's not football season. So the course might be in better condition, but they work on it. I've seen them out there. They, they have a pretty sizable maintenance staff that gets out there. And, and like I said, they protect the greens, the bunkers very well. And 
So if anything on this day with the mud and a little bit of damage on the fairways, yeah, I probably could have moved my ball a little bit over to the grass a little bit more than I did on this particular day. But this was a good shot. This was my eight iron approach. Not sure what I was doing with that follow through, but managed to clear the bunker. This is a small green. Uh, that's the other reason why this core, I mean, look at the, the green there. It's pretty, uh, the, the distance from the bunker to the flag is, is short. So I say fear, uh, fear rating five for this hole. And, and it's a little bit of false fear, but if you factor in the size of the green, maybe we give it a, give it a five after all. All right, birdie putt. My only birdie of the day. Here it comes. No, not a bad putt though. All right, this was a twilight round, by the way. Twilight rates are uh, good, especially if you walk at Brookside. Um, so it's, it's, for pace of play, I recommend twilight rounds here because uh, earlier in the day, it's a city course. It gets pretty, um, or it's actually run by the county, I think, of LA. It gets pretty crowded sometimes. So I usually go out there for a twilight round and pace of play is great at that time. Uh, but I also did not get in 18 holes this particular day. So I only filmed nine. So here we are on, on hole number seven. This one is a breath of fresh air because it's only 297 yards. We've been dealing with some distance to this point um, on our par fours. This one is shorter. Even if you're like me, you only hit it about 250 yards, you can still probably clear that, that first bunker that it's imposing in the fairway. It's only about 200 yards out. And if you're a big hitter, you can go for the green here. So, um, the safe side is on the right. Well, I say that I went right here. It wasn't completely safe, but <laughs> um, but it's it's a short enough hole. There's also some some creativity that you can um, put together here. Uh, so I give it a fun rating of five. You can fly that front bunker if you want. You can lay up short of it. I mean, hit two like 150 yard shots here. Totally fine. Um, and I did not do that on this particular day. I was like, I'm gonna, I wanna try to make a birdie before I'm done with these nine holes. So I wound up and smashed it to the right. It kind of came back a little bit there, as you can see, um, but it rolled toward the trees. And so look at this. Okay, I'm gonna pause it on this, on, the, on this, uh, freeze it <laughs> on this shot. Okay, so what happens here? Well, there's, there's a tree, I mean, you, I don't know if you can see the flag, but the flag is in between the tree that's right in front of my face there and the one to the right. So I could go straight for the flag <laughs> and it'd be like, a, you know, the uprights and the field goal attempt or something. But there's, I mean, it's only about 15 to 20 feet in between those two trees. And it's probably about 50 yards to the, to the green. So I could do that, but like, I mean, that's, I mean, come on, let's, let's have a psychology moment here. You hit that shot. It's the shot of the day. You go in between those two, two trees, you get it up on the green. You have a chance for birdie. It's the shot that you're going to be talking about after your round is over. Like amazing. If you miss it, which like, I mean, look at the lie that I've got. This is not a real clean look in terms of, <laughs> I mean, it's up, it's up on a little tuft of grass, but if, if you, if you miss that window, you're going to hit a tree or even worse, you like, I don't know, you, you miss the, the contact point on the ball and you don't even get to the tree and then you got to do it again. <laughs> so there's a, it's a high risk, high reward shot. And so I think if you're out there just for a good time to hit cool shots and not keep track of score, yeah, go for it. But the psychology of it is like high, it's, that's, a scary shot and I'm like really high level of fear and also a real, real high level of fun. So if you're feeling good about it and you're not too worried about the consequences, definitely do it. For me, I'm like, hmm, I can still pitch it out to the left. I'm trying to be smart here. So I'm going to pitch it out to the left of that, that tree that's right in front of me. And it's probably not going to get on the green or at least not toward the flag, but there it goes. And I actually got lucky there because it barely cleared the cart path. I'm hitting a you know, like a five iron chip shot and I made it to the front of the green here or the fringe. So I went the safe route, but if you want to have more fun and not worry about your score, 
hit the cool shot, hit the high risk shot. I just don't recommend it if you're trying to make a score, which I was, even though I think I might be about to three putt this hole. Yeah, I three putted after all that. Oh, well, it's a fun hole though. I recommend hole number seven. It's fun. All right. Hole number eight, another birdie hole. This one I gave a, 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 I mean, it's a birdie hole because, well, it's middle of the pack for fun, middle of the pack for fear, but there's really not a lot of fear involved in hole number eight. 323 yards, I mean, I don't know. It's fairly short. It looks visually a little bit like, uh, let's say, hole number three because we're going back north. There's that walkway, uh, the road where people walk and run behind it. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, it's a birdie opportunity that way. Uh, fun rating 10 because it doesn't really stand out too much either. In fact, if you ask me off the top of my head, even though I played Brookside a bunch of times, hey, tell me about hole number eight on Nay, I'd be like, which one is that again? <laughs> so anyway, it's, uh, it's fun always when you're looking north to see these, these hills and, and the, uh, and the scenery and I smashed this drive so I must have been inspired in some way on this on this hole and I made a good choice here to hit a pitching wedge even though I only had about 70 yards because it was able to sneak its way through the mud that's a cool look here with the sun rays coming through sunset coming soon and a decent birdie putt kind of tailed off to the left so now I'm worried I'm like am I gonna three putt this again Okay, Whew. sigh of relief. Okay, par on number eight. So I'm, I'm sticking, hanging in there at plus five. One more hole left. This is, this is again, this is, this is another one I might get mixed up with hole number eight. It's similar. Uh, I think I misspoke. The, the walkway, the road where people walk and run, that's behind hole number nine, not hole number eight. See, I'm already getting confused. Hole number nine has a little more distance to it and 383 yards and all these north facing holes have a slight upslope. So this one I'm, I'm, uh, I'm calling a bogey hole because it's similar and fun to the last one, but there's a little bit more distance to it. Um, if you, if you miss hit your drive, uh, you might be in a little more trouble on this hole. Yeah. And I kind of did miss hit my drive. Well, I hit it pretty good, but I, I drew it to the left. So off the, off the tee, I was like, uh-oh, I'm going to be behind a tree. But no, this hole is decently forgiving after all. So I have a clean look at it, but I swung too hard. Clearly, I was trying to do too much with this 5-iron, and I ended up there <laughs> in the bunker. You can see the walkway back there. It is just a really fun place to be, the Rose Bowl. So some of these holes kind of, you know, if you took this hole in a vacuum and was like, you were like, oh, look at this golf hole. You'd be like, yeah, it's pretty straight, a little bit uphill. Eh. But when you take into account the setting, Brookside starts to stand out. And if you can get it on a, on a day when pace of play is good, like we did here with the Twilight Round, um, super fun. So that looked like a bogey to close it out. So I was plus six on the day. Yeah, it's okay for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed Brookside uh, Nay course. Um, that's the number two Brookside course at the Rose Bowl, uh, the front nine. I do not have a back nine video for you today, but uh, hopefully uh, in the future I will film one. It's an enjoyable place. I, uh, I think the, the, the downside is that if you're playing the day after a football game, uh, <laughs> or during the fall, you might see a little damage on the fairways. They're not going to be in the greatest condition um, always. But uh, other than that, the greens are in fine shape. They're small. They're challenging. Um, and like I said, the setting, it's really hard to beat. You also get year-round golf, uh, good weather. So uh, Brookside is recommended. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's course video log. Uh, the psychology of golf and please like this video subscribe as you wish <laughs>